welcome back to the channel so today our point of remark is about statistics in research so why as a researcher we need to understand statistics especially in research in my previous video we discussed about process of research so first process we discussed as identification of problem then literature review making hypothesis or we can say that formation of hypothesis then data collection so after collecting these data we need to analyze this okay for analyzing our data which we collected from our field or we can say that which we collected from from our sample we need to use certain statistical tools so statistics is a branch of science that deals with the collection organization analysis of data and drawing of inference from the sample to the whole population so here we discuss that the statistics is deals with collection organization and analysis of data okay so here you should give more importance for the term analysis of data okay analysis actually helping us to make certain inference or conclusion about our sample and this inference we can apply to whole population okay so after collecting the data we should use a suitable statistical test for drawing inference from our sample or we can say that collected data okay so for making or for taking a suitable statistical test first we need adequate knowledge about statistics in research otherwise we cannot select the suitable statistical test which we need to use for analyzing our data okay so what happen if as a researcher if i don't have an adequate knowledge of statistics if i don't have proper knowledge about statistics in research that will lead to improper selection of statistical test so this improper selection of statistical tool may result into wrong conclusion and this wrong conclusion may lead to unethical practices okay so it's very important to have good knowledge about statistic in research because knowledge in statistics help us to select the suitable statistical test for our research okay so the suitable statistical test only leads to the proper conclusion about our research study okay so first we should know the major areas of statistics you can categorize the area of statistics into two first one is descriptive statistics and second one is inferential statistics so first we are going to discuss about descriptive statistics so before that we can check what is descriptive statistic and inferential statistic in in nutshell okay we mention our two major area of research as descriptive statistics and inferential statistics so this descriptive statistics mainly used to understand the basic feature of data okay or else we can say that this will provide as a summary of sample and measurement so moving on to inferential statistics so it describe and make inference about the whole population okay first we need to discuss about descriptive statistics in research okay as we all know that in a research study we may have lots of measures so descriptive statistic help us to simplify large amount of data in a sensible way or each descriptive statistics reduce lots of data into simpler summary so in this section we will discuss about descriptive statistics in the terms of measures of central tendency measures of dispersion so these descriptive statistics that means measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion help us to identify center and spread of data okay so first we can discuss about measures of central tendency so measures of central tendency there are mainly three measures of central tendency are the first one mean second one median and third one mode so each of these three values helping us to find out the typical or central value of our data so it is actually helping us to identify typical or central value of our data that's why it is considered as measures of central tendency okay the first one mean okay we can say that mean or average okay so i think mean is probably most used method of central tendency okay so how we can calculate mean i think in our lower class we studied more about mean how to calculate the mean of a data or average of a data compute mean all you have to do that add up all the value and divided by the number of values 
Say for, say for example, I conducted a quiz program in my college. Okay. So there were eight students who participated in this quiz competition and they, so they scored different marks like 15, 20, 21, 20, 36, 15, 25 and 15. Okay. So eight students scored eight different score. So I need to find mean of this particular data set. Okay. So what I need to do, first I need to add all these 8 values. So after adding all these values, I got the answer as 167. How I can find the mean of this? So I have 8 students, right? So 167 divided by 8. So the mean value of the score which scored by 8 students is 20.87. This is how you should calculate mean of a data set which you have. So, I mean, calculating mean manually is very difficult in research because we have, I mean, n number of data. So, it's very difficult to calculate mean by our manually. Okay. So, we have many kinds of software like SPSS for calculating mean. Okay. So, here I am just explaining what is mean and more for just to make you to understand. Okay. Next, we can discuss about what is uh, median. From the name itself, you can understand what is median. Median means the mid value of a data. Okay. So we can take the same example. I conducted a quiz program in my college. So many students participated in this competition and they scored different marks. Okay. Their marks are uh, 27, 23, 36, 31, 39, 37, 47, 42, 53. Okay. So for identifying median of this particular data, first what we need to do? First, we need to arrange this data from least to greatest. So, if you are arranging the data which we collected or the value which, uh, which scored by our student. So, how we need to write this value from least to greatest. So, we can write like 23, 27, 31, 36, 37, 39, 42, 47, 53. So, here you can find the mid value as 37. Okay. So since 37 is our mid value, in this particular data, the median is considered as 37. So this is in the case of odd, I mean odd number. So what if students who participated in QS program is 10, okay. So how we can find out the median of even number? Finding out even number also, first you need to arrange your data from least to greatest and need to find out the average of the middle value okay taking another data set that is 23 27 29 31 35 36 40 42 44 47 so in this data set you can find two values like 35 and 39 as the middle value so for finding out the median for this first you need to find out the uh, average of the two middle value that is 35 plus 39 divided by 2 that is 37 so here the median is 37 and third one is mod so mod is considered as the, the most frequent number in a data set okay i have a data set with the numbers 4 2 3 2 2 5 okay so by analyzing this data you can understand the number 2 occurred many times. Okay, compared to other numbers, the number 2 occurred many times. Since the number 2 occurred in this particular data frequently, in this data set, 2 is considered as my mode. Which means, which means the number that occurred more time in a data set, that is considered as mode. Okay, so understanding the relationship between mean and median is very important because it will give us the insight about the distribution of our variable okay so we need to know about different kinds of distribution so the distribution of a statistical data set is a listing or function showing all the possible values of the data and how often they occur you can find mainly normal distribution and skewed distribution okay so first we can discuss about what is normal distribution for understanding what is normal distribution, we can take an example. So we went to a school and noted the heights of very large set of students. So let me make the line to denote the heights. Okay. So heights recorded between 0 0.9 meter to 2.1 meter. And let's mark the heights with interval 0 0.2. 
meter that means 1.1 1.3 1 1.5 and 1.7 and you got a graph like this so you can see maximum at 1.5 meter here you can see that in both side of 1.5 are actually equally distributed so which means 1.5 is considered as the central value so this type of distribution is called as normal distribution it is also called bell curve because it shapes resemble with bell but is the data always normally distributed we can look one more example to understand this so here we can check income distribution per month so income here i am going to take in 1 lakh okay so the range is going to be from 10000 rupees to 1 lakh rupees so after collecting data we found that uh, almost all the employees earn around 10000 to 50000 per month okay very less people earn less than 10000 and very less people earn more than 50000 so here the central value is approximately 50000 since the central value is around 50k we can see a long tail in the right side as a tail in the positive side of the central value we say it as distribution is positively skewed what is negative skewness to understand this we can take one more example so we collected the data marks scored by the student so let the mark range from 20 to 80 this time the distribution looks something like this so from this data you can understand that majority of the students scored between 50 and 80 while the central value as 50 we see a tail in the left side because its tail is in left side of central value it is called as negative skewness understanding the relationship between the mean and median is important because it gives us the insight into the distribution of variable that's why we need to understand median and mean in a variable okay so now we can check how we can uh, approximately identify mean and uh, median in a data set if you want to identify the median value of a normal distribution first we need to order them from the data set first we need to order from uh, least to greatest in the case of normal distribution it is very easy to find the middle value you can see middle value as here so what about if you are dealing with non-symmetric distribution okay so here you have to remember that the value i mean what value the area of left and right is equal you should mark your median as there you might be tempted to go here but remember you should mark approximately what value the area of left and right is equal so here this is my median what about the mean in the case of symmetric distribution the mean and median going to be actually the same so you can remember in this way like mean is going to be your balancing point okay so well in the case of asymmetric distribution you can see the long tail in the right side so it is going to put the mean to the right of the median in this case so our balancing point or mean is something close to that that is why it is important to understand the relationship between the mean and median because it gives us the insight into the distribution of the variable so next one we are going to discuss about measures of dispersion so measures of dispersion is extent of spread of value from mean value okay so in central tendency we discuss about the typical value or central value but here we are going to uh, understand about the extent of spread of value from mean value okay spread of value so the measures of dispersion are first one range second one variance third one standard deviation and fourth one coefficient of variation standard deviation is the most commonly used measures of dispersion first we can discuss about range which is denoted by r defined as the difference between highest and lowest observed value which means range is equal to value of highest observation minus value of lowest observation let's take an example of given data set okay so here the given data set is 12 29 32 34 38 uh, 49 57 so here you can find the value of highest observation is 57 and value of lowest observation is 12 so for finding out the range first you need to minus the highest observation uh, value 
minus lowest observation value which means 57 minus 12 which is equal to 45. Next is about variance which is denoted by S square. Variance is to compute the distance of any observation in the data set from the mean. Here S square is equal to goes from i is equal to 1 to n x minus x bar bracket square divided by n minus 1. A square is the variance, n is the number of data points, psi means individual values of data, x bar is the average of data points, reason behind dividing n minus 1 instead of n is, there are only n minus 1 independent deviation which means x, xi minus x bar. We can check with an example. So, compute the variance of the sample data 3, 5, 7. Okay. So, the sample mean is 5. So, if you are applying the same equation, we will get the answer as 4. Third one, standard deviation denoted by S. So, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. The sample standard deviation commonly expressed by S, it is positive square root of sample variance. That is S equal to square root of S square. If you are taking the same uh, sample data set which we uh, calculated in our variance and we will get the standard deviation as 2. So the coefficient of variation is calculated by this equation. So higher the coefficient of variation the greater the level of dispersion around the mean. So these all are the major points for today's class. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you have any doubt, you can comment me on this video below or else you can mail me on this mail ID. So thank you so much for watching my video. Uh, we'll meet.